there it is. I've driven this stretch of Route 66 before and somehow I just drove right past this. It hadn't been a night because how do you miss this? It's an 80 foot long blue whale. The blue whale of Catoosa, which is where we are, Catoosa, Oklahoma. If you've heard of this place, you've probably heard the story around it. This guy built a giant whale as an anniversary gift for his wife. And maybe that's entirely true. Or maybe it isn't. After doing my research, I'm going to say it's half and half. Either way, it's one of those stories that just unfolds, you know, like Route 66 itself. I'd take the long way home if it meant I'd go walking by your door. Together we could see where the road will lead to the unknown. The whale builder, the guy, was Hugh Davis, a dashing wildlife photographer and adventurer who had worked his way up from menial job to become the director of the Mohawk Zoo, which is now the Tulsa Zoo, before he even turned 23. The woman, the whale's recipient, the woman who would eventually become Hugh's wife, was Zelta Whitlaw, an intelligent, energetic redhead with a fearless love of all critters. Sounds like a movie already, right? One of those meet cute rom coms, but the backstory, backstory isn't very comic. Hugh and Zelta, before they came together, had each lost a spouse under tragic circumstances. Zelta's husband was hit by a car while changing a tire, and Hugh's wife, Melba, died of a tropical disease after accompanying him on an animal-collecting Caribbean expedition for the zoo. If those things hadn't happened, if Hugh and Zelta had been able to just go on with their first marriages, this most likely wouldn't be here. There wouldn't be a crazy cement whale on the side of Route 66. Hugh and Zelta met either on a blind date, as Zelta said in an interview in the 1990s, or by chance encounter at Kane's ballroom, as her son Blaine recalled from family stories. However their paths crossed, they hit it off, and they got married only a few months later. They settled into a life together, a life that was filled with animals, and not just the cute kind. A lot of them were not what most people would think of as cute. Early in their marriage, the couple did a tour where they were doing lectures and presentations. And in these presentations, Zelta would walk the ballroom floor adorned with all these snakes. The audience loved it. When their kids came along, son Blaine and daughter Dee Dee, Zelta and Hugh raised them in a house filled with creatures. As a kid, Blaine had a bobcat for a pet. And according to an interview he did many years later with the Route 66 podcast, the zoo's orphaned and sick babies didn't matter what species they were. They, a lot of them ended up at the house. As a family, their vacations consisted of trips down Route 66 to collect rattlesnakes. One day, Zelta said, hey, that land's available. Let's open an alligator farm. So Hugh built a big wooden ark on the land, complete with animal cutouts, and they opened it as a children's attraction. He wasn't sold on the alligator idea at first. Since he was still working at the zoo, the responsibility for the alligators was going to fall to Zelta. He wasn't really sure about that, but a little arm twisting later, Zelta got her gators. And then after she had them, she realized they're not as easy as she imagined. In the 60s, Hugh retired and he took charge of the alligators. At first, it was business as usual on the petting zoo, but then a 200 pound alligator escaped, turned up a couple months later in a river. That was kind of the last straw for him with the alligators, so he took them all to Arkansas and release them in the swamp. Hughes retired, but he's not that kind of retired, so he has to do something. His attention comes to this pond. This is where the stories kind of diverge. According to Zelta, Hugh's big creation was meant to be a private thing, and local kids just sort of snuck in. But it really seems clear that the kids were there already. They were already swimming there before the whale, and they might have been the actual motivating force behind the whale. I read one article that said that Hugh, not one to pass up an opportunity, started charging 50 cents to swim here, but the kids wanted something to jump off of, play with, so according to son Blaine, Hugh built something for them. I'm not sure what, probably like a dock or diving board, I don't know. Then he built something bigger, then the kids wanted something else, so he built something bigger, and then, now we're getting pretty close to the whale. 
The part everybody agrees on is that Hugh convinced a welder friend to help him, and he started putting the bones of the whale together out of steel pipes in 1970. It took two years to complete it. If Hollywood made a movie of Hugh and Zelta's story, the climactic scene, drawing on the popular version that almost everyone repeats, would show Hugh, played uh, maybe by Matt Damon, leading Zelta, Amy Adams, she's in everything, He's leading her with his hands over her eyes and he leads her to the pond and then he pulls his hands away and we see her seeing it, the look of awe that comes over her face. And then we cut to the completed whale painted its famous bright aqua blue towering majestically over the pond and the music swells and Zelda slash Amy whirls with tears of joy to her adoring husband and the pair kiss passionately. That's the movie version. But the reality, you know, it had to have been less romantic because, I mean, there's no way Hugh could have hidden two years of work in order to accomplish a big reveal. According to Zelta, she knew he was building something, but he wouldn't tell her what. So she kept guessing and she kept getting it wrong. And I can definitely buy this because if you imagine this without the paint, without that eyeball on there, just raw concrete, which is how it would have been when he presented it to her, I don't know that I would have gone to whale right off the bat either. Finally, because she just wouldn't shut up about it, he told her what he was building. And he told her that it was meant to be his anniversary gift to her. Blaine, in that podcast interview, he hypothesized that what actually happened is that the anniversary date snuck up on Hugh. And having forgotten all about it, he didn't have a gift. So he presented the whale in progress to Zelta right there on the spot, declaring that she was the only woman in the world to have one. And she, yeah, she was the only woman in the world, so she happily accepted. Either way, the whale became a huge local attraction through the 70s and 80s. And families came to swim here, slide down the slides, climb down the ladders. But as times changed, as those families built their own backyard swimming pools, the numbers dropped off. And that, combined with Hugh's failing health, led to the park closing in 1988. Hugh died a few years later. In the late 80s and 90s, a few vandals managed to sneak past Zelta's very stern, no trespassing signs, and some of them were actually met by Zelta and her rifle. Zelta herself passed away in 2001. When Blaine took over stewardship of the property, he started a revitalization effort with the aid of the Catoosa Chamber of Commerce, and then that got the whale reopened in the form that you see today. You can't swim here anymore. The water isn't really safe for that. You can still fish. It's catch and release. It always was catch and release. The ark, the snake pit, the alligator farm are almost disintegrated. They're not gonna be restored because the damage, the damage has just gone too far. But there's a quirky little gift shop. There are the picnic tables that Hugh placed on the sand that he hauled in. And there's the whale itself. Hugh's labor of love. Zelta's prized possession. That's enough to attract generations of Route 66 travelers. Team and Zelta loved each other. That's pretty clear. But I think this love story is bigger even than that. Their daughter, Dee Dee, wrote an article for the Catoosa Historical Society before she passed away from cancer. And though I couldn't find the actual article, I did find this quote from it. She said, Hugh believed that every day was a beautiful day, that people should use the talents God gave them, that one should keep busy with thinking and planning and creating, that people should love what they do and do what they love, that you should always finish what you start and enjoy life to the fullest. I might not ever create something that has the kind of impact that Hugh's whale has had, I might not bring th the thrill of snakes into the ballroom, and I'm probably never gonna receive an 80-foot concrete token of love, but I'm gonna take Hugh's advice. I'm gonna fall in love with the creative adventure of my own life, and I'm gonna share it like Hugh and Zelta did. I'm gonna make my own whale, whatever form it takes, whatever it turns out to be, and I hope you do too. And that is the story of the Blue Whale of Catoosa. There is no end if you Tell believe. Story. Just take my hand and come with me.